hey YouTube, how's it going? It's Max. As you can see, I finally got my razors in, so I got the shave going. Still need to get myself a haircut, but yeah, that's another day. Um, today, I wanted to talk a little bit about cybersecurity, I guess. Um, I was watching this Netflix documentary. Um, it's kind of like a TV show with uh, six different episodes, I think, and it's called uh, The Web of Make-Believe, Death, Lies, and the Internet. And it's a good series. I recommend checking it out if you haven't seen it. It's sort of like if you like Black Mirror kind of stuff, uh, kind of like the dangers of technology. But this is more, instead of it being like fictional stories, it's more about like real life occurrences and where technology was misused and harmed people's lives. Um, if Again, there's probably going to be spoilers in this. So if you haven't seen it, um, you should probably go see that. Um, but, you know can honestly just stop the video at any time if I'm going in too much detail you want to watch it for yourself but there's this um this two part or uh, two, two episodes split up into two parts uh and it's called it's about the stingray technologies and um a summary of this uh, so a stingray the stingray technology is pretty much uh this device I'll get into it a little bit more detail but it's this uh, device that's kind of controversial where the government can kind of listen in on your conversations, kind of like bugging from a distance so they don't actually have to go into your house to bug it. They can bug it from uh, a range, and they were able to catch this guy using the Stingray technology. Anyway, uh, this guy, um, he gets caught. He's been stealing $2.2-ish million from the government. Uh, how he was doing it was he was faking tax revenue claims. So pretty much he would like create these algorithms. He's like a programmer. And you create these algorithms where he would get like all the information needed and the names of deceased people and they would create the um you know when you file your taxes at the beginning of the year he would pretty much do that for a bunch of uh dead people and then he would get the return the claims or whatever from these deceased citizens so he's basically stealing money from the irs um he was pretty much he was very smart uh so he was really good at covering his tracks i think this was like 10 years ago so um you know that the technology was around the time when uh, iPhones were just starting off. I don't think they were actually like a thing at the time, but they were taking off, I think, while he was in jail or something. So it was it was uh, about a decade or, and change ago. Um, so technology is uh, has definitely improved since then. But even at this time, they were using the Stingray technology. And um, they used it to track him down. And so the guy, uh, the criminal guy, uh, he, he was so good at covering his tracks uh, that he realized that they must have broken a law in order to catch him. So he represents himself instead of getting a lawyer and uh, composes this argument that the government basically violated the Fourth Amendment to uh, catch him. Now, the guy loses the trial, but he made such a good case against the government breaking the Fourth Amendment that the government was afraid that if he were to appeal this uh, this case, he could win and do some damage to the system. Uh, so the government pretty much offered him a deal that they would, uh, you know, prevent him from going to jail and all that. And uh, the guy now, I think he works to uh, kind of for um, some sort of organization that kind of tries to check the government in their online security kind of stuff, uh, make sure that they're not stepping over boundaries i don't know the, the specifics it was it's all in the video um but anyway i'm glassing over the details a lot because uh, it was like an hour and a half it's hard to really summarize it um but um it's overall very interesting if you want to take a look at it and i kind of wanted to talk a little bit about the moral of this story um so uh the, the stingray technology um essentially uh the technology that the government used to track him uh and what it kind of does is it kind of forces you your device so he was using a computer that was connected to like uh it was before wi-fi really was a big thing so he had this like uh verizon card and essentially it would force the verizon card to hook up to government um essentially wi-fi instead of the cell tower so um anything that he did on his computer would go directly to the government instead of going to the cell tower and why this was kind of relevant was because if the government didn't use this technology they'd have to go to the cell tower to look up the data and they could find data that was coming in within like a four mile radius or something like that but because they were able to get his computer to directly uh 
sync up with their Stingray technology, they were able to identify exactly which computer he was using, despite the encryptions that he was using on his computer to try to mask himself online. And so why this was kind of important was because in order to use the Stingray technology, you have to sort of um, use it uh, in like a small radius. So they were actually getting innocent civilians information as well as the criminals. Um, so like what they could do is they could attach it to a car and just drive around and then anything that was uh, doing a cell signal in that area, they could get that information. So it's, uh, it's an argument of invasion of privacy, really. And um, so he was making the argument, the criminal was making the argument that the government was uh, violating innocent civilian rights in order to get the information in order to catch him. Therefore, it, it should toss out all the uh, information that the government, uh, based on finding him, uh, sort of like a false trial or something. Um, but ultimately, the government... Uh, was really diligent in keeping their records and saying that, you know, this is the exact reasons why, and it was all kosher. And so the judge favored the government on this one, but it was really, um, I, I'm not probably, I'm probably not explaining it very well, but pretty much um, it was just, is this technology a breach of our right to privacy or is this technology keeping us safe? And in this example, it was uh, definitely, you know, used for justice of trying to prevent this guy from stealing millions of dollars from the IRS. But who's to say that this technology um, couldn't be used maliciously by the government, you know, to infringe on our personal rights. And so that's kind of like what I want to talk about. So I think that like, um, you know, this is a very controversial topic. Um, I think that my opinions on this are probably controversial. Um, especially because I feel like uh, the United States and most people in general are really pro-privacy uh, for individuals. Um, and I think that I uh, personally, you know, think that it's okay for the government to use this technology in a regulated way. And I think that in a regulated way is important, but I, I also kind of want to talk a little bit more why I think the government should be able to use this technology. Um, Again, this isn't like an, uh, a topic that I feel super passionate about. Um, it's something that I think about once in a blue moon, but you know, we just watched the documentary and uh, I'm making video series on stuff. So I figured that it would be a good video to talk about. Um, and I, I wanna talk first a little bit about the criminal uh, in the video, uh, a couple of points that they made that I think are really sound and good. So in the closing argument for why the criminal thinks that this technology should be kind of like abolished, um, he goes into saying something along the lines of, even if you do agree with this technology because you aren't doing anything bad online, what's stopping the government from then being able to use um, basically something that you did like 10 years ago in order to make a, a case on you in the present? So if you did something bad like 10 years ago, and this is something that like we can see in today's day, like people especially getting canceled and cancel culture for things that they did 10 years ago, uh, you know, kind of canceling them today or, uh, you know, especially in like politicians, you know, they may have argued for something, you know, 20 years ago. Now people are using it against them. You know, these are definitely valid claims. Also, um, there was another argument that uh, they brought up in the video about how the Trump administration essentially used similar technology in the present uh, with ICE to locate like undocumented immigrants and basically arrest and deport them. And, um, you know, I think that these are two valid uh, counterpoints to my original claim that I think the government should use this technology um, in a regular way. But I, I think that, um, and, you know, I agree that I don't think the government should be able to like cherry pick bad things that you've done in the past to kind of arrest you for them. And I don't think that, like, you know, the government should use this to try to find criminals. There was this movie, I forget what it's called, but essentially it's uh, it's about, like, if we have technology to a certain degree where the government can, like, read our minds before we can commit crimes, should they arrest us before we commit the crimes? And I think these are, like, pretty good uh, philosophical arguments, um, but ultimately I think that this all ties back to, I think that, the government should be able to use it, but in a regulated way. And I think that these regulations should kind of be in place to counter the government from being able to cherry pick these things or um, use it to, you know, locate 
people who aren't haven't even done crimes yet, etc. Um, <clears throat> sorry, it's a lot of a lot of talking. Uh, so yeah, I think that um, so I think that uh, my claim, I think it's okay for the government to use it in a regular way. Um, I think that in the documentary, they prove that. Uh, while it was kind of on the fence, they still used it in a way that was, um, you know, for justice. Um, and I think overall, the the point of the the documentary series was to kind of showcase these events that, like, if the government wasn't able to track people online to begin with, then these criminals would have uh, probably been able to do more damage um, because they wouldn't have gotten caught, you know. So there's a, like a lot of cases in this series where there people are doing toxic things online, and because the government had this technology to catch them, then um, that's how they were able to, you know, stop the crimes from occurring. And a lot of these crimes were, um, you know, pretty serious things where people were uh, ultimately killed because of, uh, you know, what seems like harmless jokes and harmless pranks. So I think that it's definitely something that's not a, um, a cut and dry issue. Uh, I think there is definitely room to talk about it, but I had uh, seven points here, um, or just, I guess, seven things I wanted to discuss uh, for this video about, um, uh, guess what we're talking about. So I ultimately think for number one, the point, I ultimately think that these regulations are a necessity and um, but, or the regulations for the government to use this technology is a necessity and that if the government were to violate these regulations then uh, it would result in severe punishments um, so that's kind of a uh, a no-brainer kind of thing um, it, it's definitely a caveat to me being on the side where it's pro-government can use this technology I think that if uh, you know if they weren't regulated um, or if we had a corrupt government that was using this technology, but kind of like ignoring the um, the regulations aspect of it, then I think I would agree that, you know, the government shouldn't use this if they aren't able to, um, you know, be regulated for it. So I definitely think that that's a strong point for why I'm on this side. Um, number two, it's the same uh, reason why we have like, so the reason why I think the government should be able to um, regulate online activity and stuff like that is the same reason why I think that like human resource departments should have information about their employees or that doctors should have uh, information about their patients while you are sort of, um, you know, employed in that company or, you know, seeing that doctor, I think it's crucial for them to have certain information that could violate your privacy, so to speak, in order for them to, uh, you know, uh take care of you um so like you know the so the human resources department needs your you know your banking information not to steal money from your bank but to pay you and uh you know doctors need to know all this personal information about you so that they like your blood type and all that stuff so that they can um you know administer like the correct medicines and stuff for you without there being any negative side effects and if they weren't able to get access to this information or you know because they have access to this information, they also have confidentiality kind of things that they have to sort of sign. And if they were to, you know, gossip about your social security number to your friends, uh, to their friends, then that would uh, be very bad and they would have, uh, you know, be punished for violating those agreements. So I think it's the same for the government where the government can't just give around your information to, you know, other countries or other companies i think that's starting to get into that gray area where it's you know we can sort of um uh you know draw the line there but um i think for overall the safety and security reasons i think that it's necessary i just don't think it's necessary for them to be sharing your information without your permission to those kinds of third-party um, organizations so i'm on that stance where like i think that the government should be able to have access but not willingly you know share that information similar to how human resources and their employees doctors and their patients etc um number three uh i do think that there is a potential i think i talked about this a little bit that like the government can misuse this kind of stuff 
uh, like, you know, they could theoretically share your information. They could theoretically, um, you know, create like ice and, uh, you know, hunt down people of a certain uh, ethnicity that they don't like and deport them. I'm aware that, you know, similar to how a cop could, you know, plant illicit drugs on a suspect. Um, I think that these are all possibilities. Uh, but I think that um, ultimately that in, ideally the government wouldn't do this. I know that it's possible that they could, but ultimately if we didn't allow the government to do this, then it's almost like the lesser of two evils kind of thing. Whereas like if we didn't allow them to do this, then things could get even more out of hand than if we did allow them access, even though there are these possibilities of negative consequences. I think that the alternative outweighs the, uh, is a lot worse for us overall. Um, so like number four, if the government didn't have access, then they're unable to counter um, those who do have access. So pretty much like it's inevitable for this, like the technology already exists. So people are going to get their hands on it. Um, you know, if, you know, a company produces this, this product and, you know, people with malicious intent can purchase it then, or they can create it themselves, then if the government's outlawed from doing it, that doesn't really stop criminals just because it's outlawed. doesn't mean that people aren't still going to get their hands on the technology and still use it for nefarious purposes. Um, so similar to like the dark web, uh, which is a whole nother video, but I think that the in dark, the existence of the dark web is inevitable. And while there are like, you know, people, like a lot of people on the dark web using it for harmful, you know, things, I think that the reason the reason why the dark web exists is because the government created it to protect sensitive information through an encrypted network um, so that like other countries can't spy on them, et cetera. And so people are now misusing it um, for bad ways. I think it's similar to this where like, you know, while the Stingray technology could be used in the wrong hands, um, the purpose of it, well, it's going to exist one way or the other. And if the government's using it for purposes that are, you know, almost like required in a way to compete with the, uh, the competition of like malicious uh, internet hackers and stuff like that, then it's kind of like a, um, again, going back to the lesser of two evils. Um, but I think that, you know, it's ultimately going to exist no matter what. We might as well have people who know how to use it, trying to use it for good in a regulated way, as opposed to just it being a free for all. Um, and then number five, uh, just because we, this kind of goes back to what I was just saying about countering, just because the government, uh, or just because we prevent the government from using this technology doesn't mean that the technology doesn't exist. Uh, technology will continue to become more advanced as the years come. So, you know, 10 years ago in the video, like we didn't even have like, we had this technology before we had iPhones. So I can't imagine like, what type of technology we have today that like the capabilities of this kind of technology and you know it will continue to become more advanced um you know i'm getting old already i can feel it i know that you know i'm not an expert on this kind of technology so having people who are you know in our like department of defense people who are specifically have jobs to protect us as a nation because i don't have the bandwidth to really like you know research this to the uh, upteenth degree. Um, so having people whose job it is to kind of protect the public uh, by, you know, continually being more informed about this uh, kind of stuff and trying to counter it, I think is a plus. Um, so if they're using it, they're more um, aware of like how it works, stuff like that. Um, but yeah, ultimately, uh, I think I'm just kind of like beating the you know, saying the point multiple times. Anyway, going on to the next one, number six, um, you know, I understand that, you know, we as a people are, you know, kind of suspicious to our rights of privacy from being violated. But, you know, if we are consumers in the modern era, if we're like using our phones every day, if we're going online, um, you know, I feel like we have to learn to accept that, you know, while we're plugged in, uh, we're not really a, as anonymous as anonymous as we think we are. So like, even if we're using like a VPN or hiding behind a username, that doesn't mean that people um, can't really figure out who we are. You know, there's, you know, everything's kind of tracked online. And um, going into number seven, at the end of the day, I think that 
uh, this is kind of an overall good for society to have this kind of monitoring going on, uh, especially watching this series. Um, pretty much every criminal in this thought that they were this kind of like untouchable person online. And um, so that kind of allows them to be like, oh, well, I can act a bit toxic and I can be destructive and I can harm people and people won't know who I am kind of thing. And so because we were able to, uh, we had this technology to track these people down, uh, the crimes were then solved. If we didn't have this, you know, locating technology and this ability to, uh, you know, find messages on the computer that were deleted, stuff like that, then, you know, these a criminal could just delete all their messages and it's all gone. There's no evidence. We The crimes would be un, unsolved and there would be greater quantities, in my opinion, of these um, kind of, you know, evils going on online if we didn't have the means to counter them. So um, I, I, I'm talking a whole lot. Uh, pretty much if you get anything from this video, um, I think it's just important to realize that, you know, as long as you're online, um, it's impossible to be completely private. Um, and I don't, I, I want the takeaway to be like, this isn't a bad thing necessarily. Um, you know, I think that similar to how we have CCTV cameras in public, always watching people in public, um, preventing people from doing crimes, and if a crime does occur, we can use that data to kind of prove who did the crime. We also have these CCTV cameras watching us while we're online. Um, yeah, while we're online. So not just in public, we have CCTV cameras while you're online. And uh, they kind of do the same purpose. Um, so like even if you're um, in public, there's a CCTV camera. It, un unless you're really doing something bad or perceived to be bad, um, like if you aren't doing anything bad, then you don't have anything to worry about. I know that was the guy's counter argument uh, in the video, but honestly, I think that, you know, it, it's, it's the same mentality. If you're in public, you aren't going to do anything bad because, you know, you could get caught. I feel like we should have that same kind of uh, perception while we're online if we're, you know, being good people, trying to be good. Uh, it, like, I, I feel like people online can get away with being bad because they don't think that, you know, there are any consequences. They can, you know, call people bad names. It's like, why do you, why don't you do that in real life? You know? So I, I just think that like that kind of like that mask that you can wear online. Uh, if we realize that we aren't actually as masked as we think we are, we probably will treat each other better and be less toxic online. So I think that that's the positive takeaway that I want. Um, but yeah, in conclusion, um, if you feel like I'm wrong, feel free to, uh, you know, share your opinions in the comments section. I feel like I have a pretty, uh, you know, I, I'm no expert, but I feel like I, um, I, I feel good about my stance. I feel like it's pretty sound, but you know, I'm not, I'm not an expert. I don't know all the information. Would love to learn more if you have anything you want to share, but, uh, if not, then, you know, have a great day, uh, later days. I'll see you next time.